Hello, let's take a look at your MT1 LT3 seminar on line segments. Uh, before you go further in the video, <coughs> excuse me, do the first five questions to activate your prior knowledge and get your brain ready for what we're going to be learning. What we're going to be learning today is we're going to calculate the measures of line segments and we're going to apply the definition of congruent line segments and we're to find missing values. Now, between this of points, sometimes you'll see this referred to as the segment addition postulate. Remember, a postulate is something we accept without proof. And what it says, as long as you have three points that are collinear, that's the big F. They got to be collinear. They got to be in the same line. And we're going to say like C is between A and B. What we're going to say then is AC plus CB equals AB. The sum is equal to the parts. That's, what we're, that's really what we're saying. Now let's apply this on a problem. I want to find the measure of XZ. Well, notice X to Z. I can get that by adding XY plus YZ. Well, XY is 11.3 and YZ is 3.8. Well, if I add 11.3 plus 3.8, we get 15.1. There are units in this question, so let's make sure we put centimeters in there. And there is our answer. So XZ is 15.1 centimeters. Now we can approach that backwards also. Oops, I want to see the picture here. I'm going to do the same thing on the next example, except notice I know P to R. So P to R equals P to Q plus QR. This time, P to R is 13 and 3 fourths. In other words, we know the answer. P to Q is 6 and 5 eighths. I can see I should have left more room on this problem when I made this study guide. Well, then... Well, let's do the algebra. We'll subtract 6 and 5 a's from both sides. It also gives us a chance to review how to subtract fractions. I'm going to write it over here. So I'm going to take 13 and 3 fourths. I'm going to subtract 6 and 5 a's. Well, remember, you need a common denominator. My common denominator is 8, so I don't change anything of the second fraction. That's 5 eighths. And then 4 times 2 gives me 8, so 3 times 2 gives me 6. So I'm really taking 6 eighths minus 5 eighths, which is 1 eighth. And then 13 minus 7, or 6, is my 7. My brain got ahead of my mouth there. And then it's feet, because we have... units on this one. Now what happens if I don't have a picture? We'll make a picture. I want to find the value of X and BC. Notice there's two parts to this answer. I want more than just X. And we're told B is between A and C. So I'm going to draw that out here. So I have A and C. B is someplace in between. I don't know where. I'm just going to call it Right there. Now I know A to C is 4x minus 12. Whoops, forgot my minus 12 there. And I know A to B is x, and I know B to C is 2x plus 3. So if we use our segment addition, I know AC equals AB plus BC. Well, A to C is 4X minus 12. A to B is X. 
and b to c is 2x plus 3. I can simplify that a little bit so I get 3x plus 3 equals 4x minus 12. And then I can get all my x's on the same side, so we'll minus 3x from both sides. And notice when I do that, 4x minus 3x is x. Well, I want to get rid of that 12, so let's add 12 to both sides right away. So x equals 15. That's part of our solution. It's not the whole solution, but it's part of our solution. Then I'm supposed to find b to c. In other words, I know a to b is 15, don't I? And so on B to C, that's 2X plus 3. And we know X is 15, so it's 2 times 15 plus 3. 2 times 15 is 30, plus 3 gives me 33. There are no units on this one, so I'm just going to say B, C equals 33. On your assignment and on your assessments, make sure you answer the question that's being asked. Now, if I look at our next example, oh, I had a nice picture on here, but it disappeared. Well, we'll just draw it out ourselves. And so now, it says Daryl is visiting the Space Needle. In our Space Needle, remember, it's a you can look it up, but we've got this tower up top, and then my needle goes below that, so it's high in the air, and you can look from there. It says he knows the total height of the space needle is 605 feet, so I know this whole length is 605. And then it says the distance from the ground to the observation deck is 10 feet more than six times the distance from the observation deck to the top of the needle. In other words, I don't know this distance but to the top, but I know the, the distance below it is defined by that. So my unknown I'm going to call X because I don't know what it is. And then it says it's 10 feet more than 6 times, so the bottom part would be 6x plus 10. Well, then I can apply my segment addition. I know 6x plus 10 plus x equals 605. So I think I'm going to just write that down. x plus 6x plus 10 equals 605. Now we're just going to solve that. x plus 6x is 7x plus 10 equals 605. In other words, I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides. And I'm going to get 7x equals 595. So we divide both sides by 7. I can't do that in my head. So let me see. Let's use a calculator, but i got I got to get a calculator open here. So I'm going to take 595. My calculator opens up. We'll divide that by 7. And we get 85 feet. So I know the distance to the top of the space needle from the observation deck, that's 85. But I don't want that. I want to find the total. I want to find the distance from the ground. Now, you could do one of two things. I could substitute it back in, couldn't I? I'd say 6 times 85 plus 10. But I also know 605 is the whole length, isn't it? I know my top length is 85. And I'm going to call this B for the bottom part. 
So then I just subtract 85 from both sides. In 60 minus 8 is 7, 72. So I know the, the distance from the bottom to the observation tower is 720 feet. And I think I'll write that. It's a word problem, so we'll write it as a complete sentence. So I'd say the distance from the bottom to the observation deck is 720 feet. And there's her answer for that part.